Greetings to all of you on this wet and kind of dreary Sunday morning. I'm Pastor Don, and I would just want to say how really glad I am that you and I could be together uh, for this Facebook Live experience. I want to say it's Facebook Live um, because um, it used to be a video that we took, and we could always retake another one. So what you see is what you get this morning, and we'll trust it works out for the best. For those of you who are not from St. John's, we're in Ohio, and like almost all of the United States, uh, we're just seeing this huge uptick in the coronavirus. And just three days ago, uh, the United Church of Christ uh, conference sent us an email and said that they're issuing a strong recommendation that we close services for the rest of the year. So we're doing that and now getting back to these kinds of getting together. And since we can't be together in person today, it's so nice to have this way of continuing our community and inviting you into our home here in Troy, Ohio. So I just would invite you to take a few moments just now to settle in. And if you like me, get your cup of coffee and take a sip and, uh, and just uh, sit back and let the Spirit speak to you this morning in this time. We're just a small congregation in Troy and trying to new, learn new ways, so please be patient with us. Um, in a separate post on Facebook this morning, you should be able to see Mike uh, reading the scripture for the day and Jenny playing the music. And we would have had those things in our personal, in-person worship, uh, but we hope that this will help to round out the entire experience for you this morning as you worship with us. Can you believe this? It's the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and we're in the middle of a health crisis that we have never seen in this country and probably in the world since that epidemic of 1918 and 19 where 50 million people died in the world. And we're sort of in competition, I guess, with that calamity and maybe you or someone you know has died from the COVID and uh, I'm sure that you know people who had it. And in the middle of that, how dare we talk about gratitude? Well, the text for the morning is one of those top two or three psalms, as far as favorite psalms goes. It's the hundredth psalm. And I want to read it for you, even though Mike has read it, and this is in a little different translation, but listen to it. And I'd like for you to notice, as I read it for you, how many times the psalmist says, if you feel like it, or if you're in a good mood, here's how I want you to act. So pay attention to that as I read. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God, and he is good, and that he has made us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. I don't know if you picture things when you read something like that, but I do. I picture those ancient faithful people on their way to the temple on a Sabbath morning the required attire is not a mask this time, although I believe in masks. But it's not a mask this time. The required attire is singing and thanksgiving and praise. It's like there's a sign on the door, just like there is on our businesses around Troy. If you enter, here's how you need to dress. And it's on the temple door, and it says, if you enter, Come in with thanksgiving and with singing and with praise. But I don't feel like praising this morning. I don't feel like gratitude. I'm not even sure I have it in me today. Is that how you feel? 
It's not a surprise that you do. But I want you to notice that the spring of gratitude is not your feelings and it's not my feelings. It is the forever goodness of God, who is always good. So despite your feelings, put on gratitude and bring that with you to worship this morning. You've known about this kind of thing since you were a child. Your mother surely must have said to you like mine said to me, and what do you say to Aunt Elva when she gives you a gift of a fountain pen when you really wanted a pocket knife? What do we say? Your mom asks. So not understanding at the time the need for gratitude, even when you don't feel like it, we manage as a child to say not too deeply felt, I guess. Thank you, Aunt Elva. By the way, I had an Aunt Elva. So, as an adult now, don't you see, gratitude is not about you. It is not about whether you're getting what you want out of life this morning. Gratitude is not always about your feelings right now. Gratitude is about lifting your eyes from what's happening to you in the moment and practicing the discipline of noticing all the things that are around you that are just sheer blessing and giving thanks for that. All this is beyond anything we have ever earned, either of us. I did that this morning. I got up early and I watched the sun come up and light the backyard for the first time today. And so I said to myself, what are the three things you're grateful for today? And first of all was Marianne came to my mind and I'm just so grateful for her in my life. And the second thing was the faithfulness of the sunrise. I know the science tells us all about it and we know what time it's going to show up every morning, but I'm still just so grateful. And the other is for the people in my beloved community, the people at St. John's. What a blessing they've been to me. One very interesting side benefit of this business of the discipline of gratitude is that as you faithfully make a practice of gratitude, the more you actually begin to feel grateful on the inside. So the sun just shines through in spite of the clouds and hope is born again. Let's pray together. God of abundance and generosity, thank you today for the many things that we have been given and we seldom notice.